Hello, Canucks fans, and welcome back to another episode of Canucks Conversation, brought to you as always by the 2024 Toyota BZ4X. The BZ4X is Toyota's brand new all-electric SUV that is designed to go the distance for you and your family. The BZ4X is packed with Toyota's coolest tech, but it still has that trusty SUV feel you know and love. And even though it's electric, it's capable of effortlessly conquering any terrain. Whether it's rain, snow, mud, or your friend's questionable post-game recaps, the BZ4X will get you through it all. And of course, we're coming to you from the iconic Wall Center in downtown Vancouver. Looking for your next meeting space? Contact the Wall Center for all your event needs at sales at wallcenter.com. A big win for the Vancouver Canucks, Harmon. Dave Gugelli, alongside Harmon Dial, our technical producer, the man with controls, is Grady Sass. A lot of interaction already in the YouTube live chat. People very excited after last night's victory over the Calgary Flames for the Vancouver Canucks to clinch their first Pacific Division title. Really fun game all around, right? Whether it was the actual product on the ice, uh, between whistles with Philo Peronik, uh, and just Thatcher Demko's return as well, right? Looking extremely sharp, uh, not just playing well, but legitimately, especially as Calgary started to push in the second period, and especially in the third period, making some phenomenal saves. That that looked like peak prime at his best, Satcher Demko. So a massive check mark there for his return. I know there's always some angst when a player misses a lot of time with injury, and are they going to pick up right where they left off? And in Demko's case, definitely looked like that. Uh, and offensively, right? Yesterday on the show, I mentioned I wanted to see guys like Mikheyev, Bluger, Suter, some of these secondary scorers pick up some confidence down the stretch so that they are hopefully able to contribute some meaningful secondary offense in the playoffs. None of them scored, but you look back at the goals, right? Mikheyev had a nice entry pass to yep. Pedersen, picking up the secondary assist on Hoaglander's goal. Bluger with a really pat patient play, shorthanded where... He could have immediately cleared the puck, but waited to see if one of his teammates would join the play. And there was Myers and Bluger feathered a perfect pass across to spring him. Nice snipe there. Uh, and then Suter as well on JT Miller's goal at the end. Nice neutral zone play there to disrupt a Calgary breakout spring Miller. Uh, nice to see those guys get offensively involved. Yeah, it was a good game, and we're going to get to a few things from this game. Obviously, the secondary scoring is a topic for the reasons that you just brought up. Philip Peronik is a topic for another reason. We're going to talk about him. But, Harm, did you see this? Because this was put on social media. So, if you've seen it, it doesn't really work. But have you seen who the last 10 Pacific Division winners are? Did you see that post? I think I, I all I saw was Edmonton wasn't on it. Okay, so that's the big thing. Edmonton hasn't won a Pacific Division title since. Okay, this. Okay, okay, excuse me. This is when it was going back to the Northwest Division as well. But, anyways, uh, Edmonton hasn't won the division title. Actually, no, when was their last division title? That, that might be right. Um, when was their last division title? I don't think they've won one at, as 87. Pacific Division. Are you serious? That's the last time they won a division title. That's shocking. That's actually really hard to believe. And yet somehow makes sense. It's the longest division title drought in all of North American professional sports. Wow, I actually had no idea. What the? I, I How have I not chirped my Oilers colleagues about this yet? That is... Because, okay, so this is what happened, folks. I was looking at the Pacific Division winners on Wikipedia... And I saw that the Oilers weren't there, and I'm getting up to, like, 1994. So I'm like, okay, well, this is before it was the Pacific Division. So obviously, the Oilers have won one since then. No, 87 was the last time they won a Pacific Division title. Or a division title, excuse me. I should stop saying Pacific. A division title, 1987. That's incredible. And especially when you have McDavid and Drysdale, you're gifted to, whether you want to call them top five, uh, depending on how highly you view Drysdale, but two of the game's best offensive players and you can't win a division title yo that's that's actually crazy that for i don't know how we didn't know that because wow like you have all these oilers fans it makes it way funnier that the canucks ended up winning the division because you had all these <laughs> oilers fans talking their crap online about oh they're coming back they're gonna come back they're gonna come back and it, 87 1987 Harmon. Do you know how much has changed since 1987? Lots. We were minus 13 years old. Minus 13. 
damn that's insane okay <laughs> i don't even know how to okay so what i was gonna say is that the past 10 division titles um for the pacific obviously the canucks have not won it in a while it's been a while for the vancouver canucks since they won it when was the last time they won it they obviously won it when they won the president's trophy but why aren't they listed on this how did the divisions work before it went to Pacific? Was it still Northwest? Well, that's what I thought, but wasn't there a... Wasn't there a time? Someone someone help me out here. <laughs> there was a time when... Yeah, Northwest Division Champs, 2010-11. Yeah, so, exactly. And I'm assuming they went it in 11-12 as well. But was the Pacific Division also a division during that, when the Northwest Division was a thing? I don't think it was called Pacific. Interesting. Because in the Pacific Division, like in 2010-11, it says that the San Jose Sharks won the won the Pacific Division. Really? Yeah. Maybe I'm... No, I think you're right. No, no, what I'm saying is I don't think we have the divisions correct. Like, I think the Pacific must have existed. Perhaps. I mean, Wikipedia could also be wrong. There's always that possibility. Anyways, the, the point of this segment, I wasn't trying to go off the rails as much as we did. What I was trying to okay, say... Okay, now I have to actually look this up. You look it up while I talk about it. But what I was going to say is, I forgot just how dominant the Anaheim Ducks were. The Anaheim Ducks from 2013 to 2017 won the Pacific Division. Right, it was Central. The other division was Central. There you go. Wait, so who was Wait, in the and there also was there also was a Pacific Division. Okay. On top of that. Okay. Ah. I should have remembered, but it's been so long. How could we remember? We were like 10 years old. Yeah, but at, at least I remember Anaheim being dominant. How did you forget Anaheim being a power? I house? forgot they were that good. I forgot really? I knew they were good. I mean, Ryan Kessler practically no, forced no, trade there. Absolutely. I knew they were dominant. I forgot five division titles in a row dominant. That's fair. That's what I I didn't yeah. realize how many it was. And it just kind of blew my mind a little bit. <laughs> Rajcraft. This is like the hockey DB thing again. And people <laughs> in the chat were trying to give us the answer and we weren't even <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Um Let's get to it. Canucks win the Pacific. That turned into way too long of a segment. But it was really funny that we figured out the Oilers haven't won since 87. That's crazy. Unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. Us fumbling is 100% justified, or at least worth it. Yeah, when we got thrown off. Because of that pull. Exactly. When we get thrown off like that. 87, Harmon! 87! I I wasn't even born yet. I asked you, how much was different in 87? The answer is, we don't know. Like, we'd have to Google it. What what was the number one movie in 1987? Give your best guess, Harm. I don't watch movies. I have no idea. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. I have no Beverly idea. Hills Cop 2. Oh, two. Yeah. You guys are lucky I had to run to the bathroom there because I would have been correcting you in the moment. Yeah, lucky. Lucky. It would have been <laughs> awful if we were told the correct answer. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get to last night's game. This segment is brought to you, of course, by our friends over at Four Winds Brewing. More specifically, i got a beer to tell you about, a sour ale to tell you about. If you're looking for something refreshing on a hot day like today, I call it hot day, what is it, like 18 degrees out? We recommend you check out the Four Winds Nectarous Sour Ale. This delicious beer has won a plethora, did I say that right? Yeah, plethora of local and national awards, including Beer of the Year at the Canadian Brewing Awards a few years back. It's light and juicy with a nice tart finish so whether you're getting ready to get out into the yard for a barbecue or you're just hanging out on the patio you should compliment the day with a tall can of four winds nectaris available at liquor stores across the province or for home delivery through the online shop at four winds brewing dot c a look at that can beautiful beautiful can perfect beer for a nice sunny day nice sunny weekend which it looks like we're about to get yeah i'm excited for it playoff hockey too let's go game one sunday night sounds like yeah oh and that is going to be uh i don't know how do you feel about that because i guess here's the other funny thing i've been used to making plans as soon as the regular season's over so like i did like months ago i'm able to be like okay there's no canucks game on this weekend this will be my first weekend to hang out this weekend coming up should be my first weekend to like go out and i'm not complaining no no I'm not complaining. I'm Everybody saying, feels so sad for you. No, I'm not complaining. I'm not I'm not trying to complain. I'm just saying that it kind of, you know, threw me off that oh wait. 
we got to work extra. Yeah, no, I, I get what you mean in all seriousness because uh, like last year in May, I did uh, a boys trip with uh, with some of my friends to Montreal, went to a music festival there. I checked out Boston, uh, Vermont as well, just because uh, one of our, our buddies is uh, is doing school there. And they were trying to plan another mid May trip. And I'm like, I, I'm not in. Can't, boys. I can't, boys. Canucks are going Canucks to the Stanley going. Cup. If it is Sunday, what do I tell my girlfriend and her family? Because they got we got a big grad dinner at 5 o'clock. Is there any way I'm getting out of that? Well, you can record so. it, can't you? Like, I, what do you have to do during the game? We can't record anything in this modern day age. No, you're right. I don't. It's not like I'm working it. But if I were you, I would... I mean, like, there's a good chance I won't even watch tomorrow's game. Just take the day <laughs> off. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you even watch the game? Quad? Well, not live. Like, maybe I'll go back and watch it, catch the highlight package. Like, yeah, that's go. the thing. You and I were just talking, and we still haven't talked about the win over Calgary, but you and I were just talking about yet tomorrow's show. What the hell are we going to talk about? Like, Play- we're going to have to do playoff related stuff. Nobody actually cares about yeah. game 82 of uh, the regular season. And Friday, when the playoff matchup's set, how much time are we going to spend dissecting the, the game against the Winnipeg Jets? like none what's more irrelevant this game coming up tomorrow or no it's the other one it's the latter i was gonna say or the canucks versus flames game that happened during the playoffs but it was a regular season game oh my goodness that one is the most irrelevant yeah but i mean that had draft positioning stuff to it no do you guys remember that was more irrelevant that was brutal it was was. do you guys remember in the bubble when they had a string of exhibition games and the canucks played the jets it was like the most forgettable oh, game that's of all, right. all time. Yes, and you I think were the Jets right. Won like four nothing or something. Yes, and then the Canucks did well in that uh, playing series against the Wild. I remember. Wait, wow. ex- I don't did even remember, remember that. that. That's no? a great pull, Grady. I bet a lot of people forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, they did. Okay, they they had Winnipeg. They played another team too. Who'd they play? It might have been the that. It might have been the remember. Oilers. I want to say the Oilers. Yeah, my brain just I think does it was not the only remember. One. No, they played two. They, they they played two. They must have played two. Pre bubble I... exhibition. Yeah. Somebody Google can we it. even Google this? Like, does does Google even know this happened? I mean, we definitely covered it at Canucks Army. Well, actually, okay. I remember the extended training camp, but <laughs> okay. How did we get on this? How did we get on this? Winnipeg. Oh my gosh. No, I can't. I honestly can't remember if they played a second game and I can't find it on Google. So they played one exhibition game. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like this. Yeah. Connor Hellbuck made 37 saves Shut up. on July 29th, 2020, yes. as the Winnipeg Jets defeated Four the nothing. Vancouver Canucks 4 1 oh. in an ex- exhibition game at Rogers. Yeah, I do not recall that at all. This is I good. remember watching in a bar in Toronto. Might have been. Had a few drinks that night and just staring at the screen. I'm like, this game does not matter. You want to guess who the goal scorer was for Vancouver? Oh, Jake for Tannen. Oscar Fantenberg. No, Antoine Roussel, oh. assisted by Adam Gaudet. Amazing. Wow. 44 goal scorer, Adam Gaudet, to you. Okay, Canadian Clay, I like this one. Quad's train of thought stops at every station. <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. It's a beautiful day outside. Yes, you're right, Logan. Um, okay. Yeah, we've got a few things. Someone's talking about how they have to go on their honeymoon and Karen Versation is saying, well, is she wife material and trying to poke holes in the relationship in the chat? We've got a lot going in the chat. I, I in the think chat, we should so get we, back on track. We, yeah. should, we should try. Okay. Uh, 4-1 victory over the Calgary Flames last night. Thatcher Demko stood out. You talked about it briefly, but I really liked his movements last night. I thought he was moving like he would. Like Honestly, without sounding cliche, it just looked like he didn't miss any time. Like, he looked normal. He looked, like, back to himself. There was no delays on reads. There was no, I got to get up to game speed. This is going to be tough. He got a lot of work. Like, Talkett joked about that post game. He got a lot of work last night, but they weren't necessarily, like, high danger chances. I think that first start back is about as good of a first start back for Demko from a what-he-faced perspective as you could have hoped for. Yeah, and especially, like, backdoor save on Pospisil, a cross-seam pass like that, how quickly he was able to react and, and get across. That was really impressive. 
the deflection chance in the third period off Connor Zeri where puck redirected and Demko had to really quickly react and get his shoulder up. That was a really impressive save. And yeah, Calgary had a consistent push in the third period. They, they, they had a lot of shots and really, really the Canucks, it felt like they were sort of cruising along and going at a tempo when I've said this before about how the Canucks have been on the receiving end when they've had their losing seasons, when a team like Boston would sometimes roll into Rogers arena and the Canucks would be pressing and they'd kind and they'd be controlling possession, getting chances. And Boston would just be going at like 80% knowing that they could just turn it on for like a shift or two and that they'd score enough to, um, to win anyway. They They were sort of doing just enough to comfortably hold possession uh, of the game. And that's what it felt like from Vancouver's perspective was it's almost like they were finishing so well and so connected offensively that um, they didn't have to sweat too much in the other parts of the ice and sort of let Calgary um, have their share of possession shots, chances, and, and Demko was terrific. Tyler Myers opened the scoring in that game. I had a really good conversation with him post game. It was just the two of us. It was a great conversation. And I uh, wrote an article about it, uploaded it on CanucksArmy.com. So if you want to go read it, you can. I just thought it was interesting to get a guy who's been here, you know, he's maybe not part of the core, but he's been part of the team since 2019, 20, right? Like he's one of the more tenured players of this team, whether you like it or not. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying he's a core piece, but he has been with this team for a while. He's a leader on this team. And I had a really good conversation with him last night. Um, and it was really good. It was, it was really good, really good conversation. We talked about, um, you know, what it means for this group to, you know, go from just mediocrity over the past five years and just, win the Pacific division. Like it's a big deal. It's a big deal to these guys, but there was also this sense in the locker room of jobs, not finished. And I think that's exactly what you wanted to see. And you and I were just joking about the Leafs drinking beers in the, in the locker room, getting more delivered after winning a playoff round, the Canucks, when they got back in the locker room last night, had division champion shirts and hats in their stalls. I didn't see a single player wearing it. In fact, I didn't even see any in the stalls by the time we were like, by the time the players were like ready to go, all all of the merch was gone. Like, I'm not saying they threw it out or anything like that. It was just, there was this real sense last night when you spoke to the players, spoke to Quinn Hughes, uh, JT Miller spoke, Demko, Myers. There was this real sense of, we ha- we're happy. We We earned this and we worked hard for it, but we have a bigger goal here. And that's exactly what you want to see heading into the playoffs. Absolutely. And that mindset has impressed me since they thumped Edmonton game game one of the regular season, right? Like 8-1 victory. And of course, because the Canucks were going to play Edmonton at Rogers Place the very next game, of course, the Canucks were going to be careful about not giving Edmonton any bulletin board material, but you could tell it was genuine. There wasn't any glee on, on... the players' faces that, oh, we we thumped these guys 8-1 when we've had this history of starting the season so poorly. You could tell in the body language, just the mannerisms, the reactions, first night of the regular season against Edmonton that they were dialed in, they were locked in, and, un- and weren't going to be swayed too much by the highs and lows. And keep in mind, too, Rick Tockett, when... Um, when they remember early in the season after they'd, they'd beat Edmund twice and then they dropped, dropped to Philly, he made sure to nip that in the bud too, in the sense that remember that quote about who are we to think we're anybody. Yep. And he bag skated them ahead of that Philly game. I think it was. So this group of players, this coaching staff has tried to stay on top of their mindset and make sure that they don't feel like they've accomplished anything prematurely. Another thing I pointed out in my story, excuse me, the thing I pointed out in my story was that Myers kind of touched on this about coaching and buying into the system and all that sort of stuff and not getting too high, not getting too low. And ultimately, you brought up Tockett nipping it in the bud there. That is why he's the landslide favorite to win the Jack Adams Award. Like as much as you talk about systems and yeah, they're doing this, they're doing that. 
Talking has had a very good pulse. Like, it's a delicate, and I'm not trying to say players are soft or delicate. That's not what I'm saying. But it's a delicate situation when you have a room full of proud guys who haven't accomplished much, and your job is to get them to accomplish their full potential. And the speech from Alvin that I talk about with Myers in the story is that Alvin has said it to us, and Myers shared with me that Alvin told it to them pretty early on last year that there's so many good players here but you guys have no clue how to play as a team. That's why Talkit was brought in. And he showed them how to play as a team. And that's why he's going to win the Jack Adams Award. Because back to what I was saying, when you have proud guys, like professional hockey players, right? They don't like hearing you say bad things about them in the media. But Talkit's a very honest guy. And I, I'm not saying Talkit's unfairly criticized his players, but you've had coaches in the past, and we've seen it in this market a lot, where you have coaches who... They want to say, this guy was awful. This guy needs to pick it up. And what do they say? Yeah, I thought he was okay. I thought he was okay when you ask about him. And it's like, yeah, he's doing some good things. Well, actually, he does some little things well. And I'm not just trying to pick on Travis Green, even though I know I gave two Travis Green quotes there. But talk it. See, here's, here's something he said about Dakota Joshua before the season even started, Harmon. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. He needs to pick it up. Put him on skating with the extras. That happened in training camp, okay? That only happened to, like, Jake Vertanen, and it was in one ear, out the other. But for a guy like Dakota Joshua, who talk it could clearly see, as a coach, okay, this guy, if I can get him to play the way we need him to, he's going to be instrumental in us accomplishing what we want to accomplish this year, and he was bang on about that. And what happened? He's had a pulse on this team and on his players he absolutely deserves the Jack Adams. I know that's not a hot take, but it goes so much further than, you know, just the X's and O's. X's and O's. Tactics. Exactly. Like, you have to be able to connect with your players. And hell, not to just gush about talk it, but I even like the part where he, you know, he's open with the fact that, yeah, not every meeting's in my office. Like, he'll, like, text his players and be like, hey, do you want to go for a walk? Like, the seawall's right there. And they go for walks, and they have talks. And, like, Elise Pedersen's a guy, he said he's done that with a few times. And, that's that's connecting with your players like that matters as a coach. That's a coach's job is to get the most out of the players that you're given. And I think talk has done an exceptional job of that this year. And I ultimately think, you know, we're going to talk about team awards and MVP. Talk, it might be this team's MVP. I wouldn't quite go that far, but I get what you're saying. And the opposite side is also true in the sense that the players deserve credit for actually receiving that message yes and committing to it because it's it's one thing to have a coach harping on these are the things you should be doing uh, this is the way we need to play to have success that okay guys it's time to be more than individuals and actually commit to something bigger than yourself right it's another for the players to actually execute and on a day in day out basis yes. with consistency right not just one day not just one week but when times are hard to actually follow through and make that the standard. And this goes back to a quote in preseason from Quinn Hughes. And, and this struck me as a sign that, okay, this core group finally gets it. It was the first clue. This was Hughes on winning this season. He said, I'm going to be 24 in October. Petey's going to be 25. Mills, he's 30. Demers, 27. We're getting up there. Not up there, up there, but we're not little kids anymore. It's time. They drafted us to do things, and we've got to do those things. Right. And that's the most conviction I've ever seen Quinn Hughes speak with in a media availability. And all that talk about, from fans at least, wanting this team to rebuild. Well, you had the guy, the core guys there for you now. If you were going to rebuild, that meant trading them all away and not capitalizing on their prime years, which is what they're doing right now. So to me, that was never really an option as much as a lot of people wanted it to. But the clock was ticking for these guys to finally show something. And yet here we are now. And they look like hopefully this can be sustainable going forward. And I think it will because they got, you know, they got the goaltender, they got the franchise defenseman and they got two top end centers down the middle. So it's not like it's like a lucky season, which we've seen like teams like Seattle last year. This team is set up to be a sustainable winner going forward if they continue to manage the cap well. Yeah, I mean, I just trust their pro scouting so much, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, also, keep in mind that heading into the season, and 
I'm sure as core players, you're aware of this too. If they had another season like last year, oh yeah, they would have ha- they would have had no choice but to blow it all up. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. You're not going to give them give a, a core group forever to figure it out. And again, if it was four straight seasons, yeah, dude, they would have had no choice but to think of the conversations that we hear from the guys on that 2010-11 team. That if Patrick Sharp scores that goal yeah. in OT in round one, and Roberto Longo doesn't come over and make that blocker save, they're probably blowing it up. The team that went to the cup, they were probably going to blow it up if that team didn't. And again, I know it's different because they lost. Well, is it that different? That team lost in the playoffs every year. This team didn't even get come close to the playoffs. Like they fake came close toward the end of the year, but they were out of it by November routinely. So absolutely. That's a great point by you. Um, bring up that Quinn Hughes quote. Anything else you want to say about the winning the Pacific, the game against the Flames, like anything there before we move on to kind of scoreboard watching a bit here? We're going to get to team awards. Do you want to do team awards first? Sure, let's do that. Kind of ties into the game a little better. Okay, let's get let's talk about the team awards. Um, let me pull it up here. Excuse me. Is there an ad read that you can do? <laughs> By the way, Heronic. We oh, talk we didn't even that. talk about it yet. Yeah, let's about talk about that. Let's talk about that. Grady, can you play the clip? Uh, this was Philip Peronic. The hot mic caught him uh, chirping with the Flames bench. We didn't even talk about really the temperature of that game. It was really scrappy. Niels Huglander not backing down from anyone. Connor Garland not backing down from anyone. You really love to see it, obviously. But um, again, like nobody really wanted to talk about that post game. There was no that was that was that just wasn't really a story last night. And if this doesn't happen, what we're about to show you, if that doesn't happen, we're probably not even talking about it at all. They got into a scrap with the team that is going on holidays in two days. You have holidays in two days. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the bad part about not making it to the playoffs. You're open for the chirp about golf. Oh, man. You have holidays in two days. (laughs) Play it again, Grady. One more time. (laughs) You have holidays in two days. Okay. That's the bad part about not making it to the playoffs. You're open for the chirp about golf. The I feel sorry for you at a boy at the end, too. That's underrated. (laughs) <laughs> it is because also keep in mind a flames player yelled back at him we can't quite make out yeah. what he said but i heard go back to and i don't know what i heard after that detroit because they never made the playoffs during Maybe his go time. back to but that's a that's such a weak chirp. Yeah. yeah even go back like i don't know whatever he said uh, it was no matter what it was a weak chirp and the stronger chirp was that heroic's response was just like Look, man, I feel bad for you. <laughs> so, important distinction here. Did you see that uh, YVR airport account quote tweeted the Canucks army? I account? did. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, that was good. Um, I have to, I have to issue an apology because we were talking about this Amazon documentary last week. We were talking about, and we were saying the most boring player for them to follow would be Philip Peronic. I ha- first of all, I want to apologize to Philip Peronic. I want to apologize to my family and friends for embarrassing myself so badly because Philip Peronic has opened his mouth twice this year. The first time was to show everyone his dog, and the second time was to deliver that that beautiful chirp to the Calgary Flames. Like a, a car- that's a career-ending chirp. Dude, that's the most likable thing he's done all year. Like, forget all the assists. <laughs> Forget all of the time when Ice he's logged, how Give him eight million now. well he's excelled on, on the top pair with Quinn Hughes. By far, his likability, his popularity, nothing is going to top how much it oh, skyrocketed yeah. than that shirt. Oh, for sure. For Dude, sure. can you imagine? Alan Walsh must be salivating. Must, he's doing cartwheels. There you go. <laughs> okay. No, but you're absolutely right. Like, that's how you endear yourself to fans and what do we always ask for we want microphones on the benches we want microphones in the penalty box it will never happen but it's just so great to hear those hot mics um catching those things you know we saw darren pang a couple weekend uh weeks back with uh travis green and peter lavaliette right in the middle of the of all the uh, chirps going back and forth on the benches so small for that speaking of all this and the document the amazon documentary they're recording a lot of stuff like they were in the locker room last night. I had my little one-on-one with Myers. 
interviewing Myers, my hands way up here, trying to get the microphone near his mouth. Got to be a way, better way to say that, but they were recording me again. I got to be in this. Really? Dude, there's going to be B-roll of me interviewing Tyler Myers standing there with my mic up. There's going to, there's got to be, but they also, you know, uh, like Daniel Wagner, Pastor Dabulis, he was doing a one-on-one with Pedersen last night, but they were standing and they filmed that too. The, the, the Amazon crew filmed that, but I got like, if you, if you missed the other show, I did my one-on-one with Lewis Pedersen and I didn't realize the Amazon documentary was filming us for the whole thing. Like they were filming us the whole time. And I was sitting next to Petey. Like if I was, if I was choosing, I would pick that B-roll over the one of Daniel Wagner. Gee, I wonder why. Well, Wags is standing. It's way cooler <laughs> to be sitting. Amazon star David Quadrelli. I'm curious if they'll travel on the road too, because uh, yeah, on the road, like I know Drancer and I will travel. Uh, I'm sure Ian McIntyre will, tra- will travel. But outside of that, I, I don't know how many reporters there will be on the road in, in Nashville, for example. It'll be a smaller, um, smaller setting, less of a media frenzy than here. Yeah. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, if they follow uh, him on the road there too. Maybe you'll get in the documentary. You feeling a little jealous? As seen no, on Amazon, not really. As seen on Amazon Prime, David Quadrelli. You know if I'm in that at all? Like even if, if it's like a split second, every intro to the show is gonna be. My name is, as seen on Amazon Prime, David Quadrelli, <laughs> alongside Harmon Dial. See, I've been on real TV quads. Oh, oh, that's cold. I was in a commercial. Sorry, one, that's so mean. I was in a really? commercial. Yeah, how many commercials have you been in? None, none. So take that. Even playing field. What Even, commercial were you in? I'll I'll pull it up. It's quads as intermission hits with Murph. Never. Sorry, wait. I'm I'm trying to find my commercial. <laughs> I said, when are you getting your intermission hits with Murph? Well, we talked about it, but anyways, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> Just tell us what commercial. Well, I'm trying to find it. It was for... Uh, <laughs> we'll air it on tomorrow's show. Yeah. I'll, I'll, Are I'll, we allowed to? I, I think... What do you mean allowed to? Well, we don't oh, for me? copyright. Oh, copyright. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll show it to you guys. I'll try and find it. I couldn't find it. But anyways, I'll what, find it. I'll find it. What was it around? It was Actually, on, no. You know what? Don't tell us. Element of surprise tomorrow. Karn, I like this. Quads is going to look two feet tall in the documentary. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Oh, yeah, and people are bringing up... But, oh, yeah, I guess we should get to anyone else. Wait, we didn't even do the team awards. We didn't even talk about it. We just keep getting distracted. How does this happen? Okay. Damn squirrels, man. Team awards. Uh, Yeah, team awards. Okay. JT Miller cleaned up, Harm. I texted you. I know. You were, you were right. I, I really thought Hughes would lap. get Everything. MVP. Yeah. Quinn like, Hughes was robbed. We talked about Quinn Hughes deserved MVP. We talked about Quinn Hughes probably deserving most exciting player. But what did I tell you? What did I tell you, Harm? That you wouldn't be surprised if Miller won MVP. That's right. Because you got you to gotta have a pulse with the fans. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> Heart and soul. What she is. Dude, did you realize? Like, I, I was on Facebook today, and I learned something. Quinn Hughes is too small. He can't shoot. And he's not going to be big enough to play in the playoffs. Can't defend. That's what I found out today. Should get their commenters to come on the show. No. Yeah, I mean, I won't make a big fuss of it. Even though I look, Miller's had a terrific year, right? 103 points, nearly 57% on draws. He's taken the toughest matchups on the team. Yep. Like he he has really been such a heart and soul player, by far their best forward. And uh there's easily their second most valuable player after Hughes, but Quinn Hughes has been their MVP, <laughs> in my opinion. So here's the thing. You're being you're being very delicate with it, which I appreciate. And also, like I said, oh, I think JT Miller might win. And JT Miller's been very valuable. I think you can make a stronger case for MVP for Thatcher Demko. I think it goes Quinn Hughes, Thatcher Demko, JT Miller. No, I don't think so. what did this team do when Thatcher Demko was out? Look awful? Make it way too close at the Edmonton Oilers who haven't won a division title since 1987? Might come back and win it? Well, it wasn't like they were losing every game. Part of it was Edmonton was just so hot. And it's not... As if they made up all that ground in the weeks where Demko was gone. Gone. The it's been a steady winning climb. streak happened when Demko was healthy. Exactly. There's no, a I, serious I, case to be made for Demko. Maybe, but uh, I st- I still give the nod to oh, it's to Quinn Hughes JT, to JT for second after oh Hughes. for second okay yeah. okay I was gonna say I'm like oh you're man of the people you're going with no. JT Miller yeah so JT Miller wins most exciting player and he also 
wins uh, most valuable player, Cyclone Taylor trophy. Yeah, a little surprise there. And then Dakota Joshua wins Unsung Hero. I was a little bit surprised that Garland didn't get it. Again, I don't think Garland is actually unsung because, look, if you're getting your name chanted in the stadium, yeah, you're not flying under the radar. But still, if we were going by the logic of you're just picking somebody on that ballot mm-hmm. who's been who's perhaps the most likable, I, I would have thought they would have gone with Garland, especially because Joshua won it last year. Yeah. So I was a little bit surprised there, too. Joshua becomes the fifth player to win it back-to-back years. He can't win it next year. Why? He, he, he would tie Yannick Hansen. Three years in a row. He would tie Yannick Hansen for the most unsung hero victories or recognitions in franchise history. He would tie Yannick Hansen for most. Especially, he's going to be, he's going to get a, an actual legit oh, they're gonna boy sing. contract. They're going to sing. They're going to sing this offseason. So, yeah, if he's on a big boy contract, like you don't, especially you want it back to back already. Like, I guess that's the biggest strike against Garland besides the he already gets all his recognition is he makes 4.95. I'll give you a bold take. This is just a hot take that I'm just pulling out of nowhere. Next year's Unsung Hero, Tyler Myers. Yeah, I don't know. I think this market's coming no. around on Tyler Myers. Tyler Myers. If, if Susie is healthy, mind, if Susie is healthy. Oh, that's a good take. Keep in mind, though, Tyler Myers. Is gonna be on a much friendlier contract next year. Yeah. This market's I, already starting I'll tell to really you, like I'll, Tyler Myers. I'll say this: he has gotten too much flack. Oh yeah, for sure. I still run into so many people in person who hate Tyler Myers, and I'm like, yeah, he was bad the first month of the season, but since then he's been such a steady middle of lineup uh, presence. I mean, averaging nearly 19 minutes a night, slightly tougher than league average matchups when you look at the data, and the mistakes with the puck have diminished significantly right his decision making on breakouts is a lot smarter Uh, he isn't out of position defensively as much he's just been a reliable presence and he's got a chance at 30 points if he gets a a point uh against uh, his former team the winnipeg jets on uh thursday they gave leading scorer to jt miller too That's a good joke. Dumb joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long I thought about giving you that joke or not? If I was going to say it. The other ones. Uh, Elias Patterson, most three-star selections. And then the one selected by the team, Quinn Hughes gets the Daniel and Henrik Sedin Award for community leadership. Uh, he has his Team 43 initiative, which we've talked about a lot. Uh, donating four tickets to every home game to first responders in BC. Obviously, he's got that personal connection. He talked about his grandfather being a firefighter in New York City for over 30 years. Uh, in similar news, Quinn Hughes also named the Canucks. Was it King Clancy? Yeah, it's King Clancy. Sorry, I get that confused with the master. Uh, King Clancy, he was their nominee for the King Clancy Award, which every team nominates a player, and then uh, Gary Bettman votes on it. It was just Gary Bettman selecting it before, but now it's like past winners are helping him select. That's the first time this year Interesting that that's happening. So that's cool. Um, and we will see. We will see if he comes home with a King Clancy Award. But I tweeted this last night. They got banners for the division titles. Going to get a new banner at Rogers Arena. Let's go. That'll be fun. Do it next season, though. Don't yeah. do it before playoffs. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That'd be really funny. Game one of the playoffs, they have a banner raising ceremony for the Pacific Division title. <laughs> Someone I actually okay, so I, mean, I thought about I don't this. even think they raise a banner anyway, like for just a division title. No, like no, even no, they, they do start uh, next season, they do. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show you. Um, but this is so this is what I found really interesting was um people were pointing out that those banners, like you can look at the Western Conference champion ones, okay. The next time they won the Western Conference champion was when they won the President's Trophy. So they put a President's Trophy banner up. That one's not there. Those are just like Conference Division champion champion banners. If they win the Western Conference, which is what we're going to talk about a lot in our next segment, they will simply just add a year to that existing right. banner. Well, they'll, they'll get a new banner, but it'll have both years, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. It won't be like a big ceremony of, look what we did. Like, I don't even think they'll have a ceremony if they win the West. And... Maybe even if they win the division, the thing is, the other banners say 
Campbell Conference champions, and then it says Northwest Division champions, and that has 2010-11, 2012-13, 2011-12. Don't know why I read it like that, but that's what the banner says right, right on it is the Northwest Division champions. So this would be their first Pacific Division champions. So you would need a new banner. But I just wonder if, A, they just get a new thing that says division champions and get rid of the Northwest one, right? They just yeah. get one that says division champions and then bang, 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 they add the years to it and then you've got four years on it. Or if they put a new one up that says Pacific Division, I just, I don't think they're going to have an actual ceremony. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't it, think it's going to be, be really, done when we're there. It, like, I'm not going to lie, it'd be kind of sad if you have a game one of the regular season next season. Well, that's why everyone clowned Nashville, a cer- right? A ceremony, yeah, like the Central Division champions. That's like Get something it up there. Toronto would do. Yeah, right. So, yeah, we'll see. Want a playoff round banner? See that that's actually a legit accomplishment for them. You know, yeah, like absolutely, that's it is crazy. Okay, speaking of round one and playoffs, let's talk about the scoreboard watching that we're going to be doing tonight and what it all means for the playoffs. Before we do that, I need to tell you about our next sponsor, and that is the Wendy's Daily Face-Off Survivor Pool game. The only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with the new Cinnabon pull-apart from Wendy's, but there's no reason you can't have both because Wendy's and Daily Face-Off Survivor are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long, and hey, that's coming to an end. So... Even if you made a few wrong picks, at least you know heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon pull-apart and small coffee is a great choice. Sign up for Daily Faceoff Survivor today, sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. All right. Scoreboard watching, Harm. The big one that we're watching tonight is the Dallas Stars versus the St. Louis Blues. I need to remind myself, what are, we, what are Canucks fans hoping for? Because obviously you want Nashville. Like, let's just say it. You want Nashville in round yeah. one. So... Basically, to lock that oh, matchup yeah. in, you would need Dallas to not lose in regulation. Yeah. Well, the only way, put it this way, the only way Vancouver would leapfrog Dallas and face the second wildcard team instead of Nashville is if Dallas loses in regulation and the Canucks uh, beat Winnipeg on Thursday. Yes. You would need both things to happen. Yeah. So if if the Blues win tonight in regulation... And then the Canucks win tomorrow. They are the conference champions. They get the honor of facing the Vegas Golden Knights or the LA Kings in round one. And it's because of the tiebreaker. Yeah. Right. The the Canucks actually can't pass Dallas in points, but because uh, the Canucks have more regulation wins, they would uh, clinch the tiebreaker there. So I was looking this up in the spirit of all this. Can you forfeit a game? Because the Canucks are going to rest some players. For tomorrow. I don't think you're chasing this Western Conference title at all. I think this is maybe the worst year. There's got to be another worst year in history to win the conference title, but this is a bad time to do it. You want the National Predators in round one. Absolutely you do. So, I looked this up. If an NHL game has ever been forfeited. In 1918, the Montreal Wanderers had a horrendous season capped off by their arena burning down. The team folded and their two remaining games were forfeited. That doesn't sound like the NHL to me, but I brought it up anyway. In 1955, Montreal Canadiens fans, angry at the suspension of Rocket Richard, rioted when the NHL president arrived at the arena for their next home game. The fire marshal stopped the game, and the league ruled it a forfeit by the Canadiens. There hasn't been an NHL forfeit since. It's a really cool poll. The 1955 one, especially, I think you said it was, right? It is cool. But that's not why I bring it up. The Canucks just made history. Got a chance to do it again tomorrow. Just don't fly to Winnipeg. Don't go. What's what's the worst case scenario? Other than like a massive fine for the organization. Dude, okay, come on. This is the NHL and Gary Bettman we're talking about. They would find a way to punish the Canucks to some absurd degree. They would like take their 2025 first round pick away. I was going to trade it anyway. Yeah, you think Gary Bettman, who historically just loves the Canucks, would uh, would give them a break there? Oh, okay, so you can't forfeit. We, we've determined that. You Gary, can't Bettman, forfeit. Gary Bettman would be like, all right, you forfeit this game, you forfeit game one of the play- playoffs. You're down 1-0. And Have you fun. know what? Maybe game two as well, because I just feel like it. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. This is great. So a lot of people talking about rioting in the YouTube live chat, but 
you can't forfeit the game, but you can rest some players. Tockett said today that maybe one guy might not travel with the team. I don't know this for sure. All I do know is that Brock Besser has been getting a lot of maintenance lately. If there were anybody I'd sit, I'd go Quinn Hughes because he's played a lot and Brock Besser. Sit those two guys. Demko's going to start, it looks like, and I've been saying that for the past week. He should start that game. You absolutely have to get him there. The interesting thing that I thought Tockett said is if it gets a little, if the game gets loose, then Demko might not finish it. I think that's fine. Right, yeah. I think that's a Smart. great way to kind of go into it and have that plan set out and you're not trying to adjust on the fly. I like it. I like it. Um, but yeah, I wonder who the player not traveling is. Uh, and I wonder what they're going to be able to do tomorrow when it comes to resting. Yeah, I don't expect anything extreme. I like the idea that Talkit has that, okay, if the game starts uh, resembling Shinny and n- both teams aren't um, aren't really playing to their proper structure and defense, then you don't want Demko to be left out to try or making a bunch of reads that he wouldn't otherwise be making in a typical playoff game, for example. So in that type of environment... Maybe if you see that developing, then you, then you make a mid-game change. But uh, outside of that, I mean, I'm not expecting anything extreme in terms of the number of uh, absences from the lineup. I mean, I don't even think Dallas, for example, is um, is resting any of their marquee players for, for tonight's game against St. Louis. So what I would do, you put Vasily Puck Colson on line one, Give him all the minutes. Give him a little confidence boost. All right, Vasily, you're playing 24 minutes tonight. <laughs> Teddy Bluger, same thing. Bump these guys. Every Basically switch. I want Elias Patterson to play 10 minutes tomorrow. Yeah, it's not going to be that extreme. No, it's not. I hate to break it to you. No, but owner quads is putting on his owner's cap and saying I want these guys as well rested as possible. I'd be I'd be stressing to all my star players, like, guys, don't block any shots. Yeah. Uh, don't block any shots. Make your shifts as short as possible. If you think you're going to get hit, just skate to the bench. <laughs> don't go into any puck battle. That's that's what I would stress to my players. Go right into now. corners like you're Evan Bouchard if you're a yeah. defenseman. And you know what? It wouldn't be that hard. Just be like, okay, guys, remember how you played for the last five years? <laughs> just bust that out of your bag of tricks a little bit there. Okay. Anything you want to say about tomorrow's game? We still have to talk about it tomorrow as well. But Let, scoreboard watching. Let's shift to anyone else. Okay. You want to do it? I don't have it in front of me. All right. Get to anyone else. Presented by DoorDash. It's our listener's chance to get involved and hit us up in the YouTube live chat. And it's also our listener's chance to get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter code NATION25. That's all capital letters NATION and the numbers 25. Offer value in Canada. Subject exchange. Terms do apply with Double Dash and DoorDash. You can order from multiple restaurants or stores in the same delivery without additional delivery fees so everyone can get what they want and need. Okay. Someone asked about Murph. So we were going to have Murph on the show today. We were hoping to at least. He had to fly to Winnipeg today. So Murph's not on the show. But then it got me thinking, because we talked about it earlier, me on the TV panel. First of all, I don't think I really would be all that comfortable doing that got a face for radio but what would that even like what would i just be given hot takes out there like take me through how you prep for well you obviously have numbers what the hell am i going to talk about all right murph you're gonna be pitching let me tell you about the vibes <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be pitching like myers or zadorov net front shake a power play you're gonna be uh pitching an extension for noah Juleson. you now that you say it out loud i would be great on that panel then because I think there's been very little talk of a no Jules and extension on the panel this year. Yeah, none. So I can, I'll fill the <laughs> quota. You guys sneaking in Blue Jays Mariners. That's right. Oh, th- Grady, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. So earlier in the show, <laughs> Grady, good pull. Earlier in the show, Bill Kellett in the YouTube live chat says, Canucks Convo needs a five-minute segment called At the Water Cooler, where big non-hockey slash non canuck stories are discussed. Here's some examples. Basketball gambling. That happened with the Raptors player today. Baseball yeah. gambling. I haven't even updated you on the Ipe Muzuhara situation. Uh, the shocking Tiger Woods news. I don't even know what that's about, but he brought it up. And then all the comments after it. <laughs> Nar, please don't encourage quads to talk about baseball. Uh, Ty David, do not encourage baseball talk, please. And then I said, 
Oh, yeah. And then Logan said, go elsewhere if you want sports news. This is Canucks only. And then I jumped in in all capital letters and said, excellent idea, Bill. I would love a segment where I could just talk non-hockey for five minutes. I would hate a segment like that. I don't know. Dude, Bill you're so like off it. the rails as it is. You could probably put together all the non-hockey talk that we have on this show or that I have specifically and just jump cut it and put it into a segment. We can yeah. start a whole new podcast. We don't need a segment for that. We already have that baked in. It would be the most chaotic segment ever. I, I, I'm, i yeah. Did you, in all seriousness though, did you see the stuff with John Tay Porter? He plays yes. like a $15 bet and he's banned from the NBA Wait, now. He had oh, a $15 no. bet? Well, it was, Grady, do you know the story? Yeah, so basically he like, I don't know it too well, but he's big into crypto. He's big into stock. So he has his own Twitter account you know, relating to news of that. And, you know, let's add some context here. This guy is a bench player who doesn't see a lot of minutes playing on a team that isn't going anywhere. So, you know, if you're a sports book and you see all of a sudden all these unders coming in on a guy that no one ever bets. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, so, so, but he had people betting the under on like him. Two and a half threes yeah. made. Or and something, then he would right? go into the game and pull himself from the game. Yeah, and the guys were putting like thousands and thousands of dollars on it. And he'd be like, oh, I feel sick. I'm leaving. Yeah. Maybe. So he would go into the game, be like, okay, I clocked in. It's not push because I played in the game. Now I'm out. And all these guys that bet the under on him were just cashing in. Yeah. He'd make horrific shots too that just had no hopes of going in. So. Yeah, not the smartest guy by any means. But, man, lifetime ban. That is intense. I like that they came down on him. Yeah, though. dude, you have to come down that hard. Yeah. And and listen, <laughs> he's not definitely not the first guy, and he's not going to be the last guy. But holy crap, now with, with all the gambling sponsorships and, the, and professional sports, really, you know, it goes against the integrity of the league. Yeah. Now, people want to point out the hypocrisy. At the end of the day, you just can't do that. There, there's rules for a reason. I thought of a joke, but I'm not going to say it. Anyways, that was our five minute water cooler segment that Bill asked for. But yeah, it's crazy. You know, you fake being sick. It's unbelievable. Crazy. Uh, and then conversation also saying some of the bets were five figures as well. Like he was betting right. high, but there was also like some, I think it was like a $15 parlay. So dude was like, this is the one baby. And I mean, we've all been there, but I mean, not on an NBA floor. We haven't all been there. So Quads anyway. is going to tell Noah Juleson, hey, can you please block a bunch of shots? I got over two and a half tonight. Can you bet on block shots? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. Funny. Speaking so from funny. someone that who has in the past. That's funny. Karen Versation, can we get this clip again, Grady? Can we talk about how heroic sounds like Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan in Star Wars? You've seen Star Wars, right? I haven't. Yeah, I've seen like one of them. Okay, but I know what he sounds like. Pull it up. You have holidays in two days. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the bad part about not making it to the playoffs. You're the open for the chirp about golf. Do you think we could get Philip Peronic to say... You have holidays in two days. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the bad part about not making it to the playoffs. You're the open for the chirp about golf. Do you think we could get him to say I have the high ground, Anakin? Because I really hear it there when we just when we just listen to it with that in my mind. You know that scene, right? I don't. You don't know that scene? No. You don't have to watch Star Wars to know that line in that scene. Like, do you? Do don't you know, worry, Harm. I don't either. Do you? You guys must know like how Darth Vader becomes Darth Vader, right? Like who Darth Vader is. I know who Darth Vader is. Okay. Yes. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I'm asking like who he was before he was Darth Vader in the story. No, I do. I know that. I. That's actually shocking. Like I haven't watched Star Wars and I know that. You never played like Lego Star Wars, no. the video games? Wow. All right. Ty David said it all week. He asked, should they start to Smith versus the Jets? Emphatically, no. Should be Thatcher Demko. And it will be Thatcher Demko from what we're seeing. Uh, okay, anything else that we needed to get to in anyone else? It was a bit of an odd show today. <laughs> Mariners are winning in case anybody's asking. Nobody's asking, dude. I don't know. Someone might have. Quads was asking. <laughs> I, I was curious. I was <laughs> This is hilarious. Yeah, people are people people don't know. So Anakin, Anakin Skywalker has that fight with Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I mean there's a lot more to the story than that, but they have the fight. Obi-Wan chops his arm off. And then this is where my lack of Star Wars knowledge comes through. 
some guy, like a Sith guy, the bad guys are called Siths. You know that Sith Lord, right? No, the red lights. The Dude, red, I know nothing about. You stuff. have to like, know nothing. that the red lightsaber means they're a bad guy. Oh, I didn't know that. That's insane. <laughs> That's. I know Darth Vader, bad guy. I know Skywalker is a prominent last That's name. Skywalker, prominent last <laughs> name. Oh my god. <laughs> Karen Versation, bit of an odd show most days. Yeah. I think that's fair. Conversation spoilers about yeah. Star Wars, the originals. Oh man, yeah. Okay, and Lord of the Rings. This is the other thing. Nar asking guys, you haven't seen Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? Yeesh. I I have seen half of the first Lord of the Rings movie and fell asleep. I read The Hobbit. That's cool. I forgot all about what happens in it because it was like I just finished almost the like trilogy. a decade ago. What of the movies, Grady? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Enjoyed it. Yeah, my uncle's a big Lord of the Rings guy, but I, uh, yeah. Do you guys remember? Quoted, you know? Do you guys remember Warhammer, where you no. paint your own guy? No. Oh no! Someone in the chat will get it. Uh, Karn, I know Darth Vader's a bad guy. Harmon, twenty twenty four. Very sophisticated, <laughs> well researched takes. Dude, we should start a movie podcast in the off. Se- well, the off season, we're gonna get low on content. We should just like do a movie podcast, like we watch Star Wars. And then we talk about it. Uh, Star Wars is pretty good. Like, I think. I, I, it's I never know the appealed story to me. Enough. It's never appealed to me. Have you tried to, like, watch the movie? No. Though? You should. Clearly not. Well, I watched, I watched the first. No, no, I've seen two. I've seen the first one with, like, Harrison Ford, right? And I've seen the uh, Revenge of the Sith, which everybody says is the best one. So I watched that because the, the, the second batch of movies is prequels to like Darth Vader because Darth Vader is in the one that came out in like 1974 with Harrison Ford. I'm putting a cap on Star Wars talk <laughs> the same way we, we are with baseball talk. Fair enough. I have yeah. zero interest in this. I'm, maybe I'm going to go watch Star Wars. I think I might be a little more interested in it than I uh, originally thought. I like, I don't know. It's cool. Star Wars sure. is neat. All right. Okay. I believe you. All right. I've seen Harry Potter. I have. I've been forced to watch Harry Potter, but I liked Harry Potter. It was good. I watched none of the movies, but read all the books. You didn't watch any Harry Potter movies? No. Wow. Interesting. My mom used to read me the books as a kid because I couldn't read. Just kidding. (laughs) I was going to say, how long ago was that? (laughs) Also, some of those books are massive. Yeah. Oh, all right, Grady. Here's your bedtime story. Right right after you finish shaving. (laughs) Okay. How's that player playoff beard coming? Not good. I, I'm gonna shave literally tomorrow morning. It's okay. it's growing again, and I shaved two days it's ago. It's not crazy. growing. Look I can't that. see. Anything, look at that. Dude. Look at look look. I gotta shave. See, now you see it. I got in the light. You can't see me on camera because I had to get close to Harmon. One little piece of hair is coming through. <laughs> okay, I have a joke, but it is not. I guess the joke I thought of. I'll tell you. I'll tell you off air. We'll wrap it up there. Yeah, right? We'll wrap it up there, I think. Yeah, we will. For my co-host, Harmon Dial, and our technical producer, Grady Sass, my name is Dave Grigelli. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Canucks Conversation. Canucks Conversation with Harmon and Quads brought to you by the Toyota BZ4X. The BZ4X is fresh look is just an added bonus to its range since you can drive up to 406 kilometers on a single charge. That's enough to get you from Kitsilano to Whistler or Kamloops to Kelowna and back and still be home in time for the game. Now that's what we'd call electric. The best part, by choosing electric, you can get up to $11,000 in rebates and incentives The BZ4X are in stock and selling quickly, so make sure to visit shoptoyota.ca or your local Pacific Toyota dealer to get your hands on one. Canucks Conversation is live Monday through Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. over on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and interact in the YouTube live chat every day with us, folks.